Andropause is the inevitable decline of a man's male testosterone. Similar to the term menopause for women when their hormones decline rapidly. Andropause is really something all men will experience, but it's gonna be most pronounced when men get into their mid-30s and beyond. As men experience the adverse effects of declining testosterone levels, that can be easily reversed simply by replenishing the testosterone. So that can either be done in injectable form or it can be done in cream or gel form. Those are, the, those are the primary ways that we replenish testosterone. A man in andropause, a man that's losing his testosterone primarily, that's what we do. We replace his testosterone, perhaps some DHEA, perhaps even thyroid and or cortisol, again to try to obtain optimal levels. Estrogen dominance is the situation in a woman's body where the estrogen hormones are dominant over progesterone. Estrogen dominance is a term that was coined by the late Dr. John Lee, and it really describes a progesterone deficiency so that any amount of estrogen that rem remains, even lower estrogen amounts in menopause, can dominate the scene, and the symptoms you see are symptoms of estrogen effects going too far. So the predominant effect is going to be the estrogen effect, which tends to be stimulating. So if you're looking at the lining of the uterus, the uterus would be thicker, uh, breast tenderness, migraine headaches, feeling depressed. These are all some symptoms you can get with estrogen dominance, fluid retention, and they're relieved with progesterone. Well, men are often estrogen dominant, just as men, women are. In fact, with estrogen dominance, a lot of times we think about breast changes in women. And men, the estrogen dominance more often affects the prostate. But men can actually get enough estrogen on board, especially if they have extra weight, so that they do get breast development. But estrogen dominance in men will occur as estrogen levels go up and as testosterone and progesterone levels drop. Well, the most effective is probably going to be the um, avoiding the issues that result in the conversion to estrogen in the first place. So the weight loss and making sure that they're eating a healthy diet, um, exercise. But progesterone by itself is very effective at balancing the estrogen. It can actually help lower it and helps keep things in balance, especially with the prostate. In treating estrogen dominance in men, I feel it's really in conjunction with treating their overall hormonal decline. So as their tes testosterone declines, we supplement testosterone, finding where in the range do they feel the best. If their thyroid has declined and they're showing symptoms there, we want to find where in the range do they feel the best thyroid-wise, also supporting the adrenals. And I believe by obtaining general hormonal balance, we're treating the estrogen dominance state. Progesterone is an amazing hormone for our brain. It helps the myelin sheath develop. Think about a single wire with um, the insulation around it. So that myelin, in order to function properly, requires progesterone. People with low progesterone can get very bizarre neurological symptoms. Progesterone is big in brain, especially in the brain, especially brain repair. Uh, an emergency room doctor, uh, I believe back in the early 90s, uh, saw that with what appear to be equal amounts of brain trauma or head trauma that women as a rule did better than men. We know progesterone is critical for healing. In fact, they've actually shown that when women have injuries, they reheal much faster, especially when they're younger and in the time of the menstrual cycle where progesterone levels are high. So progesterone is a key hormone for the connections in the brain, for the myelin sheath to develop. We think more clearly with progesterone and we're also more upbeat. The aging process is the inevitable decline of our natural occurring hormones. As they decline, we develop the chronic diseases of aging. Heart disease, obesity or being overweight, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, and ultimately then polypharmacy takes over where we're treated by conventional doctors with a host of drugs trying to treat all these other problems, which are simply a result of the decline in our natural occurring hormones. So if you want to maintain good health and live a longer, healthier life, it's been shown clinically through 
numerous, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of studies using natural occurring bioidentical hormones that you can extend life and extend the quality of life by keeping hormones uh, at an optimal level. When you're out of balance, your adrenal gland, which responds to the stress of the imbalance, tries to compensate. Many of the folks that we see have been struggling with issues for years and have often developed what is referred to as adrenal fatigue, where there is inadequate cortisol being produced to meet the body's needs. The stress involved in feeling poorly from hormonal decline uh, can affect the, um, the adrenals. They'll have to work harder to secrete more cortisol. Tissues that work harder simply wear out faster. So hormonal imbalance in females, hormonal imbalance of the sex hormones, adversely affects not only the thyroid, leading to functional hypothyroidism, but also adversely affects the adrenal glands, leading to low levels of cortisol and adrenal fatigue. I think saying that hormones are dangerous fall into the same category as saying your hair is dangerous for you. I was born with my hair, I grew up with my hair, my hair belongs there, I'm designed to have it, and the same is true for hormones. We start making hormones before we're ever born. They're safe enough for an unborn child. In the proper doses and ratios, I believe they're safe enough for anyone. We know that hormones are associated with health. What we want to stay away from are the things that are the counterfeit hormones, the fault structures, the things that are used that do not belong in our body. That's what is dangerous. Aging is natural. It's not healthy. I think aging is natural. My hair grows naturally, but I cut it. My nails grow naturally, but I cut them. We have droughts, but we water our lawns. So natural things occur. But I think it's important to define what's really normal when you're talking about hormonal loss. The decline of our hormones leads to a host of health problems. It's like saying uh, in the summer, in the middle of a drought, well, it's natural. I'm not gonna water the yard. We'll just let the flowers die because it's natural. No, you replenish the groundwater so your plants don't die. So they stay vibrant and green and they grow. Uh, same thing uh, with hormone therapy and hormone decline. As your hormones decline, you want to replenish your hormones. You have hormone replenishment therapy. We compensate for the fact that we live with a condition of decay all the time. We're constantly compensating for things. We're cutting our grass, we're cleaning our closet, we're brushing our teeth, we're taking baths. And putting back in the hormones that are declining simply maintains health for a longer period of time so that we can be productive and healthy.